Hi, my name is Stefan Möller and I want to show you something for guitar distortion. My whole life I searched for the sound of valve amplifiers. Valve amplifiers for guitars sound absolutely amazing and my best amplifier I ever found was the Vox AC30 which you can see here on the screen. Well, I wondered what is the sound of a valve amplifier and it has different valves inside in the pre-stage, the splitter stage, the power stage and what's behind this function, what's behind the sound of these valves, why do they sound so, why do they sound different to transistor amplifiers by example. And uh, I found out that um, it has something to do with the transfer curve of the triads. The triads have smooth curves and transistors have very abrupt, edgy curves. Means the sound different. And I want to show you how that sound different. You see here on the screen here the Vox AC30, which has several valves inside. You can see here um, the picture. It has pentodes and it has triodes. And um, I looked at the um, transfer curves. You can see that's the transfer curve of a triad of the first stage of the valve amplifier. You can see it's asymmetrical, smooth, and you can see the splitter stage, which is this, a bit more asymmetric, and the um, power stage, which is um, symmetrical clipping, but smooth, as you can see here, the smooth edges. Well, we can simulate this or implement this on a DSP board, which is this from Analog Device. It is the ADAU 4052 evaluation board, Mini-Z, and it's fantastic possibilities to program this device with Sigma Studio. Sigma Studio is a tool where you can easily drag and drop and connect the tools with each other. And um, the first thing I want to show you What's the difference between different transfer curves of nonlinear devices? You see here, there's a nonlinear device, which is the, a hard clip. And here you see a nonlinear device, which is a um, asymmetric soft clipper, advanced asymmetric soft clip. And when I switch to um, an analyzing software, where we can see the um, impulse and there you see the transfer curve of both devices. This is the hard clip device and this is the soft clipping device. And we can make it even more softer when I do it 0 0.1, 0 0.1, you can see it's more softer. I'll go to 0.9. 0.9. It's similar to the hard clipping device. Very similar. Okay. Well, what does it sound? Um, when we switch over here to the this here, and, um, I go to uh, spectrum. Um, now you have a sine wave here, and. Again, the signal goes from the input, which is a tone generator, 200 hertz, a volume, and goes in here, bypassed, and goes to a high pass, and a gain stage. And we have two nonlinear devices here to separate. There's a hard clipping. There's a soft clipping. The hard clipping is like this, and you see the spectrum. When I go to very low level here, there's no harmonics to see, or nearly no. And and then they come abruptly. I can make the loud bit louder here. Okay. You can hear the waves coming 
the harmonics coming very fast coming a very wide band when I go to the soft clipping it come very smooth can you hear this? okay again the hard clipping device very fast coming very broad band so how does it sound with guitar? let's demonstrate this Okay. Okay, first the hard clipping. Sounds like a fuss. An overdrift and transistor or operation amplifier. Here, go to this, Erdo, and you hear the crackling noise. Very abruptly rising up, and then nothing. Now we go to the soft clapping device, which is this. Here, how smooth. But, well, that doesn't sound like a guitar amplifier. We need a speaker. So we have this little speaker simulation here. After the nonlinearity, I switch over to a parametric equalizer, which is the first approximation of a guitar speaker, which has a high pass and a low pass with a little Q here. And let's and this is just a little bit raising up a bit more here for sound. So you can hear this. Not bad, but still a little bit muddy. We need to precondition to the guitar a little bit, and we put a little booster, which is doing a, some mid-range boosting here. When I put this on, yeah, that's great. Good, well, and now back to the hard clipping device. Not bad, but... Did you hear the crackling, which is... Stopping very abrupt. Go to the soft. Stay long. It doesn't make the sustain longer. But some people say valves make the sustain longer. It's not true. It just they just sound a bit warmer. Here. It's very smooth. When I go to the tone blend and blend this off, see there's 
spectrum here. Now go to the hard clipping device. Get the soft clipping. Clipping. Crackling. Now, amplifier of a Vux AC30, by example, has not just one stage. And I wonder, is that maybe also one of the secrets of a real ampli valve amplifier, that it has three stages, preamp, splitter stage, and power amp. Well, let's see. We have now here on the top preamp, Asymmetric clipping, splitter stage, and power stage symmetric clipping. And we have some gains here, like a real amplifier has, and all stages are decoupled with high passes. Now let's see if you can hear any difference there. back to the one stage amplifier with um, soft clipping. Again the other. Again the other. the same here when I go to low volume of guitar you see the gain is the same there's no difference gain because I you look there's gain 10 gain 20 10 times 20 is 200 times 1.3 is the same like this times this if I calculate that right really <laughs> and you can hear um no difference, but when I go to this, there's more in it. And it's also that when you play hard, that the, the multi stage sounds more complex and like a real hard working amplifier. It's more flat. It's more spirit in there. I don't know, can I describe? Very hard to describe. But overall, the difference are not that big. But for a musician, maybe bigger and some for some for some folks who have golden ears even more so i think multi-stage is is a good thing but you can achieve a lot with just one stage when it's right done okay thank you for listening see you next time